Hey Ross Girl, my money makes money. Credit class part six of seven. Part six of seven. New credit. New credit makes up 10% of your credit score according to FICO, the Fair Access Corporation, okay? It makes up 10% of your credit score. So every time you go out and you apply for new credit and you get that new loan, it hits your credit report and then your credit score does what? It drops. Because what also drops? Your debt to income ratio also drops. The ability to how much you make according to how much debt you have. So that is why your credit score drops initially. Now, granted, after 30 days, even to a year, your credit score, because your payment history is being built, your credit score will rise. But if you don't make your payments on time or you default on your loan, then where your credit score once was when you first had that new credit, then it will drop astronomically. We're talking about 30, 50, depending on how many things you're defaulting on. It, okay. It's a huge algorithm that, hey, a lot of financial people still don't know. Only those fair asset guys and those Vantage 3.0 guys actually know. Now, granted, go over to annualcreditreport.com to see if you have new credit that you didn't have actually apply for on your credit report. They offer you a free credit report, absolutely free, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Now, granted, I don't get paid from no annual credit report. I'm just giving you the information, guys. That is it. But new credit makes up 10% of your credit score because every time you go out and you get a loan and it hits your credit report, your credit report actually takes a little dive. Just a little dive, depending on how steep that loan actually is. And a lot of people don't know that. So when you do a lot of things with your credit within the same month, you will see your credit score go from 720, 700, 670 something around those terms. It just depends, right? Nobody really, well, somebody knows because somebody's doing it. But never the fact is this though, guys, take your time when you are applying for new credit. Okay, sometimes life throws things your way and you might just have to dance your way out of it, but sometimes you have to plan ahead knowing that, hey, I plan on buying a new car in the next two years. I plan on buying a house in the next two years. Then if you're buying a card and start saving for that car right now to think about how much your payments are going to be and how much you want your payments to be and work on your credit score so your interest rates are very very low the same thing with the house okay some people say hey you want to put eight percent down on your house ten percent down on your house fifteen percent down on your house whatever the case may be you may have to put your mind to work to see how much you actually can afford and still live the same life you're living now or even better because a lot of things with houses guys people don't factor in when you live in an apartment because I've had two houses and I've been in apartments and apartments are way cheaper you have to be at a certain point in your life or you may just not be in the same place where you may want to retire and you may just want to rent until that time comes who knows I don't know right but houses come with a slew of bills now we know we're talking about new credit part six or seven, but let me throw some little nuggets of information in there. When you're in an apartment, depending on where you are, the only thing you really pay for in an apartment is electricity and maybe water, because sometimes water is included, like mine. But with a house, you're paying for trash, you're paying for sewage, you're paying for water, gas, electricity, and then you got to cut the grass if you're part of HOA, if you have HOA fees, you have house, house insurance, house mortgage, and like me, I have renter's insurance. Then you may even have personal property insurance. Did you discount all the bills I just said with the house? So you may want to map all these things out to make sure you, by yourself, or you and a buddy or a friend or a loved one or a family member have enough money to live the same life or better before you go out and purchase a home. Because granted, you're gonna take a hit with that new credit when you apply and that loan gets approved, hopefully. And we know the credit range, guys, right? 300 to 850, where all of us trying to get that golden ticket of 720, where you're considered a prime borrower, okay? A prime person, where if you below that amount, now, granted, even at 700, some underwriters, some loan people may still give you some really good rates. But I tell you this, if you're below 680, 
and you're 630 or below, 680, you're gonna get some really high interest rate, guys. So you may work on your credit first and simultaneously saving for that new house and that new car. Then some people say, hey, they don't even wanna buy a new car because it depreciates 30% when you drive it off the lot. So they buy pre-certified, that way you have a car that's you know, primarily under 50,000 miles and you still have the manufacturer's warranty. So understand this guys, 10% of your new credit makes up your credit score according to FICO, which 90% of creditors look at. Now the other 10%, I guess they're looking at Vantage 3.0, which is actually computed and made up by the three credit agencies, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. This is Ross World. This is new credit, which makes up 10% of your credit score. So understand what you need to do to get your credit score the way you want it to be, the way you want it to look right now and also in the future. I'm out.